Good evening, folks. Chief Meteorologist Nick Lilia here in the uh, Severe Weather Forecasting Center hanging out, as you can see behind me, behind the set uh, of the station uh, here. Trying to give you guys a better look at what we're looking at over the next 24 hours or so. And really for tomorrow, an opportunity for showers and thunderstorms, some of which could turn severe almost all day long. I don't think it will be thunderstorming all day long, but there's a chance all day that any one storm could turn severe. I think we get a couple different rounds of rain. I think the first round shows up about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, maybe a little bit closer to 9. I think most of that will be non-severe. Some rain, some thunder, that will be about it. I think there's going to be another round shortly after lunch or so before the main event shows up between about 4 and 5, though there is some indication, and we'll get to this here in a, in a, in a hot second, uh, that it could stick around for quite some time, and we could be dealing uh, with uh, kind of a long evening here across the Pine Belt. But first things first, 7 to 7 forecast. I know uh, some people have asked me, Nick, you do these, but you never give me a forecast. Well, there you go. There's your forecast. Uh, I don't mean to leave anybody out in these. So uh, there's your forecast, 7 to 7, chance for thunderstorms basically all day long. If you've got plans for tomorrow, I highly recommend also having a plan B and uh, keeping your NOAA weather radio app handy. So what are we looking at for tomorrow? Well, uh, the SPC has us pegged in a slight risk area. Uh, what does that mean? It means there's a slight chance of seeing some severe weather. Uh, they've got us with a 5% tornado risk. They've got us with a 15% wind risk and a 5% hail risk. If we go back to categorical, we can slide down and we can read the synopsis. You can read this too over at uh, uh, spc.noaa.gov. Uh, in fact, I'm going to slide down here a little bit farther. And uh, one thing they did make mention in here of, and I'm going hi to kind of highlight this, is that yes things are looking very good but but a lot like today we might be lacking enough instability to get things going so to speak uh we might have a, a great corvette but it's just sitting in the garage because no one can find the keys uh, i guess would be the best way to put it so uh we we're gonna have forcing but we might not have enough instability we might also luck out again by some showers and thunderstorms in the Gulf. How about that? We might win twice in one winter season, but as it sits right now, a slight risk. I wouldn't bank on that, by the way, a slight risk. Uh, so let's get into the forecast. How about that? Okay, so winds right now coming off the Gulf out of the south and east. If you look at all of these uh, wonderful barbs, they're showing you a nice southeasterly kick. But you have to kind of look at the bigger picture. And when I first looked at this, I said, oh, my goodness, here comes the southeasterly winds. We're going to have a lot of moisture in here tomorrow. But take a look over here. We've got winds coming back out of the east and northeast that are continuing off to the east and then switching back around to the southeast. Same goes here. Now we do have a, a, a southerly wind out here. Kind of turning southeasterly, but notice we've got some easterly winds in here. We've got calm winds there, a southeasterly wind here. So we are circling in some, not a lot, but some drier, cooler air, even though, yes, we are pumping in uh, some moisture off the Gulf as well. But that is uh, one thing to we will pay very close attention to uh, over the next about six to eight hours, and that will really dictate. Uh, what we see in the morning. We also have lots of full black circles in here. That is cloud cover. And boy, do we have some cloud cover and some fog out there as well. Clouds, 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 no clouds here, no clouds here, no clouds here, no clouds here, clouds, cloud. I mean, I, I could keep doing this. I mean, look at all this. There's plenty of cloud cover out there. Some to the north, too. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, recall back today, uh, we had the clouds in place. I made mention of this, 5, 6, 6, 30, and 10. We had clouds out there today, and they acted as kind of a blanket, only they did the opposite. They kept it cooler at the surface than it was aloft. That makes it a stable atmosphere, and then you have no instability, which is what the SPC is concerned about, too. You're not heating the ground so that air can rise up and we can really get things going. We got clouds tonight. The question becomes tomorrow, can we break out of these clouds and into some sunshine to get some showers and thunderstorms going, to get that instability going, to get the showers and storms going? Okay. One thing also, uh, I get people that, uh, that have kind of a trouble. Uh, they ask me, okay, so this, this changing of wind direction with height, 
Uh, what does that mean? Okay, cool. So we're going to paint this out. We go winds out of the southeast of the surface. Now let's go up in the atmosphere. Notice how everything else seems to be moving kind of that direction. Uh, and in fact, as you kind of get up here, we kind of tilt things back off uh, almost a little bit farther off to the north and northeast. What you get uh, if you were to build a, build a house, we're going to go ahead and build a house right here. Here's our house, a uh, nice little roof and everything. Uh, if you move up in the atmosphere and you have winds, let's say our house is sitting on the beach and you've got winds out of the southeast uh, at the surface, but then aloft they're coming back out of the south and west, uh, that air parcel, say on the ground, say it wants to be unstable, it wants to go up. Well, it's going to start to go that way. And then as it moves up in the atmosphere, it's going to want to kind of tilt back around that way. Uh, and you end up with these rotating updrafts. So here we are again. we got our little house, and it's, it's smaller. Sorry, we had to downsize. Uh, you end up with these, uh, these rotating updrafts as they move up, uh, and that really helps to spin things up to get severe weather going. So that's what we talk about when we talk about uh, changing wind speeds, changing wind direction with height. And we're going to have that. Okay. Speaking of the winds, uh, here we go, 10 meter wind at 15 Z tomorrow morning, still coming out. This is as of the 0 Z NAM out of the south and east. Uh, what do we have aloft? Well, we've got winds out of the south and west up around 100 to 120 knots. I mean, we got a pretty slick jet ha happening tomorrow, uh, parked uh, just off to our north, but it is going to be right on top of us. Uh, 500 millibar, I'm gonna point something out here real quick. Here's, here's, our, here's our area of low pressure. Just remember that. It's right there. Uh, we're going to have uh, all of our energy right here and then on the back side of this coming back around, but not necessarily anywhere close to us. That's okay. We're not worried about that right now. Uh, we're also looking at a little bit of vertical velocity, but not a whole heck of a lot. Oops. Didn't mean to clear that out completely. I'm going to put my little low pressure right back there. I want you to watch that circle. Uh, back here at the sur or at 700 millibars, not much happening in terms of vertical velocity. And here at the surface, again, uh, there are 850 millibar dew points. Uh, we got winds out of the southwest, and we are going to be juiced uh, with dew points up in terms of uh, degrees Celsius, about uh, 10 to 15 degrees or so. But notice how that circle, uh, it moved. Here's that circle. 850 millibars, there's your, there's your area of low pressure. 700, it moves a little bit back to the uh, west, a little bit further back to the west, and a little bit further back to the west. That's normal. Uh, some people kind of, they, they've asked me about it, they say, hey, I, I see the area of low pressure on the one, but then it moves. Are you, are you going ahead in time? No, not at all. It just happens. Um, okay, so now we're going to take it over uh, to our instability, and we're going to have some out there. Here's our, uh, our cape. We're uh, anywhere above 750 joules per kilogram as you head south of uh, that red line in the green here. We're back around 2,000 as you get back into parts of Louisiana. i point something out here. That cape right there. Does that line up uh, pretty close with that? I mean, the cape was, was that about right there or so. Lines up pretty close. You, you need the instability, and that's what cape is. It's a measure of instability in the atmosphere. And this is the wild card for tomorrow. We've got the clouds in place. We're not going to have the instability that you see down here, unfortunately. It's going to be a little bit closer to maybe one to 300. Uh, and yes, you can still get storms going with that, but they're not going to be quite as uh, violent. Lifted index, again, this is... Uh, if we can get into some sunshine, it looks like the m biggest part of that is uh, to the south and to the east, though. Again, that kind of lines up uh, with your cape, basically. Lifted index cape, both a measure of instability. Helicity, a measure of how much spin you have out there. And uh, boy, howdy, are we going to have some spin up around 250 or so uh, meters squared per second squared. D don't worry about the math in there. Uh, just up around 250. Anytime you get above about 150 around here, uh, in terms of low-level helicity, you've got enough spin at the lower levels uh, to perhaps get things moving in terms of severe weather. Uh, bulk shear is uh, just ridiculous. Uh, we're looking at uh, six-kilometer shear up over 45 knots, easily approaching 50 and perhaps even 60 across some of our northern zones, uh, and the uh, three-kilometer shear up over 35 knots or so. And again, so you're talking about three-kilometer hel helicity uh, that's how much spin you have out there. And then on top of that, you're changing wind direction and speed with height from surface to three kilometers, same as helicity. Also about 35 knots or so. You're about 250 in terms of helicity. That's enough spin at the lower levels uh, for an isolated tornado. And then you move up another three kilometers or so, and you're still dealing with shear uh, at about uh, 55 knots or so at its highest, I think, off in some of our northern counties. Okay, so we got, we've got all that great information. 
what do we do with it? Uh, well, we can cheat, and uh, we can do what I did. You, if you lay all these severe weather parameters on top of each other, and you, you kind of make like a pancake or a big giant burger out of it, uh, this is what you end up with. Uh, you end up with this area here as the most conducive area in our area to see severe weather. And, and I did this a little bit earlier this morning, and uh, earlier we were thinking a little bit more kind of in this ballpark or so, maybe a little bit farther off to the north. But it's interesting to see how that slid to the north, and I would not be surprised if, as we move through the next couple of hours, it nudges a little bit farther off to the east. Uh, that doesn't mean that you folks in Simpson County are safe. It just means the, if you pancake all of these, the most conducive place to produce severe weather is in that yellow shaded area. It doesn't mean that's where the first storm is going to be. It doesn't mean that's where the only storm is going to be. It just means that's the area that's the most conducive to producing severe weather. Okay. Okay. So we have all those parameters. We're looking at the map. We know where it's going to be in terms of the most conducive place to produce severe weather. What do we do with that? Okay. Well, let's look at composite reflectivity from the herd. Now, this is a short range model, and this takes a lot of great data. Some of the data that we just looked at, not the same model, but some of the same uh, parameters, puts it into its calculator, and it spits out what it thinks is going to happen as we move through the next couple of hours. Not much happening as we move through the overnight, though we may start to see some showers and storms bubble up uh, along the Gulf as we move through uh, about 9Z or so. As we get toward 10Z, you know, it's bubbling up across some of our southeastern zones. I think most of these storms will stay below severe limits. Probably a strong storm in there, perhaps a couple, but I think they'll stay below severe limits. Watch out for some pretty heavy rain in the morning if these do fire up. As we head towards 7 o'clock in the morning, 12Z, uh, still going in some of our southern and southeastern zones. And as we head toward about 15Z, I wanted to point this out. Here we go. Okay, so remember that little yellow area that we were just talking about. It looked like it was about right there. Her says nothing at 15Z. Just remember that. It says nothing at 15Z in that area, the area that is most conducive to producing severe weather. Okay, we're going to go ahead. Okay, so we, we run out of data right here at 16Z. Still nothing. Everything's back off to the north and northwest of that. Now, hold on a second, though. We've got so many of these models we don't know what to do with. Now let's take a look at our RPM. This is our in-house model. It usually does a pretty good job uh, with showers and thunderstorms around here. Take a look. Here we got 7 o'clock in the morning, by the way. It says kind of the same thing. Down off to our south and east, down off to the south and west. Uh, maybe a couple of thunderstorms here and there. Strong storms, maybe. I don't think we'll see anything severe at 7 o'clock in the morning. But I want to take it to 15Z. I'm going to circle that same area. Her might say no. RPM says yes. We'll have to see. Uh, you know, we've got uh, we've got the wrap that you also look at in terms of uh, short-term weather data. Uh, the uh, S wrap is also pretty good at short-term uh, computer weather model forecasting. We're keeping a close eye on this. 15Z, by the way, uh, is about 10 o'clock in the morning or so. Uh, and, I, and I made mention of this in the 10 o'clock news. I think we get three rounds, one at about 7, 8 o'clock. That's what we just saw. One a little bit after noon. But I might have to add 10 o'clock or so when we start to see maybe our first severe thunderstorm warning or first tornado warning of the day. Let's we can slide through. Here's, watch something interesting that happens here. Now, uh, keep in mind, we've got no convection out here in the Gulf. And that is one thing that the SPC says, is that, says that they are concerned about right now. Early storms and other sources of uncertainty degree of storm coverage in the northern Gulf. Right here. If we have storms in the northern Gulf... It's gonna be like last time. It's gonna eat. It's gonna eat away. We get storms out here, storms down here. This is gonna eat that that southeasterly kick of moisture, and we're gonna get cool outflow off of these showers, and we're gonna stabilize the atmosphere. Seen it happen before. Happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, it saved us from severe weather. It might happen again, but that's not a guarantee. Here we are, 18Z, early afternoon, right around lunch or so. Uh, as we head into the afternoon. Here we are, 21Z, about 2, 3, 4 o'clock. Here we are, 0Z, 7 o'clock. Yeah, 
Uh, that that's a pretty that's a pretty gnarly looking uh, batch of storms in there. Would not be surprised if we had wind gusts in here to 65, perhaps approaching 75 to 80 miles an hour. Isolated tornado here or there can't be ruled out. I'd be more concerned though about tornadoes uh, between about 10 and 2 o'clock, uh, much like I was today. I think once you get inside this line, we're going to have uh, probably a, a couple of bow echoes in here, probably a lot of straight line wind damage uh, as this pushes across the area. But look what happens. It kind of stalls out and doesn't actually push through the area all the way until 6 Z. That's about midnight or so, folks. Uh, so this might be an all-day event tomorrow. Not for everybody, but it might be an all-day event as it marches from west to east across the area. You know, we're going to start the day in some, we'll go all, all the way back here uh, to 12 Z. Here we are at 7 o'clock. Some of you folks in our western, southwestern counties, southeastern counties, uh, that's when it looks like things are going to start if Again, big if we don't have any convection down here. One thing I want to note, southeastern zones, showers in the morning, showers again mid-morning. A lull in the action until afternoon when the rough stuff rolls through. So you folks in Loosedale, Wiggins, uh, Leakesville, you guys might have the storms early and you might get a lull in the action. Remember, remember this? Hold on, let's pull this up. Remember this, you folks in our southeastern counties? This little yellow area, most of the storms that we were just watching were across northern zones, across western zones. Okay, if we get some sun in here, if there's a lull in the action, most of the storms are up here, and you've got sun down here, you're going to destabilize the atmosphere down here, which means when these showers and thunderstorms roll through, they'll have a better chance of turning severe because you're going to have more instability out there. Okay, that all being said, I think I've taken way too much time. If you stayed with me through this entire video, uh, you get a super high five from me. For tomorrow, slight risk, according to the SPC, 5% uh, tornado risk, 15% wind, 5% hail. I don't think hail is going to be a big deal for tomorrow. Thunderstorms all day long. Thank you so much for watching this. I will, I will leave you guys with that tonight. Please have a NOAA weather radio handy for tomorrow. You can check in with us on Facebook at any time for now. It is now just past midnight. I'm going to go home, go to bed, get some sleep. About six hours or so, uh, we'll be back in here. Uh, tomorrow about mid-morning, Rex and Megan will be with you all morning long. Please, please, please stay safe and ask any questions you need to uh, here on Facebook.